Hello everyone. Welcome to Peyton's Flowers. We're just hanging out here at the flower shop on a Sunday morning and I thought I would make another wreath and show you what we could have here in store for Easter. So this is going to be another Easter wreath. So welcome. We are going to have this little cute bunny gnome. How cute is he? We're going to work on a great vine today. Look how cute he is and he has all glitter. He has a glittered beard and gl glittered ears. So I've went ahead and prepped him already. He had some holes at the top. So I put some white zip ties around here. So you'll hardly even see those. And then where I need to attach him on the bottom, I just put a staple with a zip tie. So that will tie right around the wreath in three places. So he'll be nice and secure. So I think I need to go right through here because I don't want to see a lot of the zip tie. So I don't want to go right around the wreath so. All right, so we have our bunny attached. He's attached in three places here with three zip ties. One right here, one right here, one right here. So the next step I'm going to do, which is always my first or second step when I'm wreath making, is to green up our wreath. So we're gonna start with our base greenery, which today we're gonna to use variegated ficus. So we're probably gonna use three stems of this. I would think you never really do know until you get going, but I'm gonna try to use three stems, we'll see. So I'm just gonna cut this up and just cut one and now I'll show you exactly what I'm doing with the second one. So I'm just going to straighten out these two bottom stems. When they come from the wholesaler, there's always a kink in them. So I'm going to cut this one right here. I'm gonna cut this one right here then this top one I'm going to cut right in here and right here. So then we have four pieces. And I'm gonna do that with three full stems. All right. We're gonna dip in our glue pan and start at the top. Set your height and then set your width. So that's what we're doing. We're going to go on our top and our bottom. That's going to be our height. And then I'm going to find two of the smaller pieces. And then we're going to set our width. Dipping your glue, get as much glue as possible. Too much glue is never a bad thing. And get that right in between the branches of the grapevine. So as, as far in as you can, just get that in. It secures it and makes your wreath a better quality wreath in the end. Get it in there. Get it in as far and as deep as you can. So now we're just gonna fill in this whole shape starting from the middle here because everything should come from your central location right here and go up and go down so this is going to be our central location where our bow is going to go so so everything will go down from here and up from there so we're just going to fill that in All right, I think the next greenery that I'm gonna use is this brand new one to me. I've never used this. It is bamboo leaf. So that's really cool, I like it. So this is coming apart quite easily. Um, so we'll have individual fronds like this. So we're just gonna do our second layer here. And again, just get that right into the, to the grapevine. Dig it right in like that. There we go. Oh, I like this one. It's got nice 
texture to it. All right, I'm gonna take my second stem of this same greenery. I'm just gonna cut the four pieces. I'm using bolt cutters to cut. These are fantastic. It cuts through the middle like butter and it uh, doesn't hurt your hand. When you're doing a lot of this, like we do here at the flower shop or for wreath uh, markets or whatnot, uh, I could spend eight hours a day doing this. So it's, uh, it, it becomes a lot on your hand after so many years, especially when you're an old fellow like me who's been doing it for 20 plus years. Look at that. So that's two greeneries in there already. It's very nice. Look at our bunny. Isn't he cute? My goodness. All right. So now we have our base greenery done. I'm going to follow in now with our bow. So although our greenery is not finished, I'm going to put at least one more in there. I'm going to do our bow now so that we can see the position of everything and then you're not wasting any of your greenery underneath where the bow is going to be. So we're going to do that now. So these are some of the ribbons that I've collected to go with this sign. Matches really well. So these are the ones that I've started out with. I'm not saying I'm going to use them all. I might not, but it's better to have too much to start with than not enough. So we always start with our largest at the back. So I'm going to start with this pink polka dot ribbon and we always start with our largest ribbon at the back so okay so facing myself so you when you when you're learning how to make a bow you always face yourself so I'm going to leave about a 12 inch tail and then I'm going to make about an 8 inch loop and then I'm going to pinch it here in the middle vertically up and down I find the easiest way for people to learn so now the back of the ribbon, see the back without the polka dots, is facing me. So then I'm going to do my second loop and about the same eight inches. And then that loop is now polka dot on both sides. So we're going to do four of these loops. So now I'm going to go up. So you don't want to See, if I went back down there, there's no way to tie it properly and it can fall apart easily. If you put your twist tie around like that, this could easily pull out. So you don't want to do that. You want to go one loop up, one loop down, one loop up, one loop down. That's why I feel like vertically is easier than across. So there's my third loop up. Now my fourth loop, I'm going to twist it again so that the back of the ribbon is facing me and I'm going to go down. So I have four loops now. So now if you turn it to the side, there's your bow. I have four loops now and two are on the top, two are on the bottom. And right around here, where my fingers are, does you don't need to pinch too tight. Lots of people pinch too tight and get cramped up in their hands. Right around here is where it can be tied and then it's never gonna move because you have your the one piece of ribbon goes from the top to the bottom, top to the bottom, and you're just pinching it in the middle. All right, we are going to cut that one. There we go. So far, so good. How cute. And look at that. So that's about the width that we want. We don't want it too much wider than that. So now every layer from here on out is going to be a little bit shorter. 
So now we're gonna use a solid yellow. This is an RG ribbon. We do sell these supplies. RG is fantastic, one of our favorites. RG ribbon. So this yellow one is, oh, focus, focus, focus. There you go. So it's a yellow burlap with a lace trim. All right, so now again, we're going to use a little tail this time. So just a little bit longer than the loops. I'm going to twist, make a loop, twist, and make a loop again. So this is my pink loop, this is my yellow loop. And it is a little bit shorter, like half an inch shorter. That's what you want. And I think that's gonna be it, just one loop of that yellow. And you can fluff, of course, as you go, but really the main fluffing comes at the end once it's all tied. All right, now I'm going to use this pink glitter, again from RG. And I find just dropping your rolls on the floor works the best if you try to keep them all neat and tidy, it never really works. So just let it roll, works the best. There's one loop, twist, and there's your second loop, just like that. And I think this time, we're going to do a third loop. Because again, there are no rules. Do whatever you want to do. There are no rules. You're the only one who has to love this. And if you love it, everybody else is going to love it too. So now we're going to go in with our Easter ribbon. We're only going to use one Easter ribbon in here. Um, I'm kind of changing my mind, but no, I'm not going to. Let's keep going. So this is a cute little, it has gingham eggs and bunny rabbits and carrots. So we're just going to put it right in there again. Your tail, a loop, a loop, and your third loop, just like that. Look how nice and full our bow is getting already. Already. All right. Now I have that same ribbon that I used in pink, I have it in white glitter. So I'm going to put in a couple loops of that. One, two, just like that. It's a crazy bow, I love it, I love it. So in that Easter ribbon, oh, there's a shot. You can see that. The background is a burlap. So we're gonna add one more burlap just to tie that all together. And I like that this like basket weave is a little Easterish as well. Fantastic already. So we have one left. I'm just going to add a little bit of color on the top there because we went burlap, burlap, and white. I'm just going to add that little touch of turquoise blue right on the top. I'm just going to do two loops and two little tails just like that. And again, it's not fluffed yet, and it still already looks great. Oh, my nose is itchy. All right, so we're gonna pick one or two of these ribbons to make longer tails from. So I think we'll definitely use our Easter ribbon. So I'm gonna use about an arm's length. So about that length doubles. There we go, it's hard to work with one hand. But... So we're gonna put that tail on the back side just like that, okay? See that? There you go. And I think we will use the yellow. I'm gonna take that yellow 
on the back side again and we're going to use about the same length. There we go. All right, now we're going to take our zip ties. We're going to take two zip ties. So one zip tie goes right across the back of your bow like that. Don't put it too close to the top because if you put it too close to the top, your bow is going to be saggy. And then we're going to put the second zip tie right through that middle. See how I was explaining when I did the first two loops that everything goes up, everything goes down. So my finger is still right around the center of all of those ribbons. So that's where our zip tie is going to go, right through around there. So every one of those ribbons are securely tied into place. There we go. And look at that, a beautiful Easter bow. And it's not even fluffed yet. But when you have great quality ribbon like this, it does all the work for you. Beautiful. All right, let's get that. I'm gonna cut off that one zip tie that I tied the bow with. And now we have the second zip tie across the back that we are going to attach that to our wreath with. Woohoo! We have a bow on a wreath. So then, then you can work this then as much as you want. It's on there tight and securely. Nothing's gonna fall off. You can fluff to your heart's content. Put every loop where you want it to be. You have all the control at this point. Because of that wired ribbon and that zip tie in place, you have all the control. Look at that already. It's good. All right, we're just gonna cut and trim this off a little bit. So I'm gonna cut some dog tail. Awesome. All right, so our main two, three elements are done now. Our base green, our sign, and our bow. So from here on out, it's purely decorative. So you just gotta fill it in until you're happy with it. And again, I always say in wreath making, you can stop at any point. You can stop right now, it's already beautiful. Or you can keep going and make it abundant and beautiful like we're going to do. All right, so first of all, I'm going to use some color here. We have these beautiful lilac bushes in pink and in purple. So we're going to use those. I'm going to cut them up. These are push-ups. So these can be pushed up because we don't want them to be too long and then cut off. So there we go, we're gonna cut them up. That's one purple. Push them up. Two purple. All right, so we've got a bunch of purple lilacs and we're just going to spread them throughout. Again, everything should look like it's coming from that one central location. Everything should look like 
it was tied together in that bulb. So everything is going to come from that central location. Alright, I love that purple. And again, um, the fluffing will continue throughout the entire process and it doesn't really matter until the end. This is another new greenery that I have and it's a hanging draping greenery. So we're gonna add a little bit of this, not too much. I'm just gonna cut that one piece off like that. We're gonna try and see what that looks like. Trial and error, hanging again from the bow. It has to look like it's coming from the bow. There's one ribbon there that I missed. So let's dovetail that as well. That's nice, I like that. You don't want too much, but that little bit of hanging looks very nice there. So that's those two. We have some little Easter eggs that we're going to add right at the end. But before we get there, I'm going to use some eucalyptus. Anybody who knows me or if you've been following me for a while, you know that I always have some sort of eucalyptus in every wreath that I do. So this is a fantastic one that we received a while back. So I'm just going to cut it into two pieces and I'm going to use two stems. So one stem for the top, one stem for the bottom. That eucalyptus really just pops the wreath every time. Just like that. I love that. And then the second piece, I'm gonna come out from behind the bow here. And there we go. Now I'm gonna do that same thing on the bottom. So as you can see, that first greenery that we used, I'll show you again, this ficus, variegated ficus, as beautiful as it is, it's a very inexpensive greenery and we don't want our wreath to look inexpensive. That's why we use this as our base layer and it just fills in and by this time you can barely see it. It's just a filler green so that's why you don't have to use really high-end expensive stuff through the entire wreath. It's best to just do it for your base. Here's another new green that we have. This is called Gravelia and it's a push-up green as well. And I've just got one of these stems. So I'm going to use, cut these this into three pieces. And anytime you have an odd number, the bottom of your wreath should be heavier than your top. So we're going to use one at the top and two at the bottom. Nice. And these are all wired as well. So once that glue sets up, you can really bend and manipulate them to whatever position you want throughout your wreath. 
Okay, I think we need a little bit more color. So we're going to add this really cute, I don't know what you would call this. I don't think this is actually a thing from nature, but maybe it could be Heather or it could be Veronica. But it's really nice. Adds that color and it's very Eastery. Cut those all off individually. And I'm going to just spread this one bush throughout the wreath. Oh yeah, that pink really pops. I love it. Nice. Again, with that odd number, so I have five pieces. So I'm going to use two on the top and three on the bottom. You don't want your wreath to look top heavy. Much of that glue strings off as you can as you go so it don't become overwhelming in the end all right a little bit more color I still think we need some more color so we're going to use that pink lilac bush as well so I ha again I have those push-ups I'm going to push them all up and use short stems short stems are easier to control and cut those all off. This one's really short, so I'm just gonna plop that one right in the middle of our bowl like that. And maybe another one right in here. Like that, it's always nice to have a little filler in your bowl. There you go. Break through all of that greenery and get into that grapevine. Very, very important to get into the grapevine. And we're just continuing on filling, filling, filling. So relaxing, I find this so relaxing just to be able to create and play on a Sunday afternoon. And then in the end, you have a beautiful product. It's stunning, I love it. I'm gonna cut this one, last one, just a little bit shorter. We are almost done, you guys. Almost done, just like that. Now we're gonna add some of these fun little eggs. I'm gonna take these apart. They just pull right out of that grass. Dip it in your glue pot. And we're gonna put it right in there. Little Easter eggs. So cute. Guys, I think we are almost done. I'm gonna put a couple of eggs in our bow. Look how cute that is.
Now you guys, all that's left to do, the glue just needs a little second to set up there. All that's left to do is to fluff your bow, get rid of any of the glue strings. Again, manipulate that bow to whatever shape you want it to be. That nice heavy gauge wire is in there for that purpose. So you can manipulate it and do exactly what you want it to do. And then once all of that glue that we used sets up hard, nothing in this wreath is gonna go anywhere. So I'm gonna just take these longer Easter ribbons and give them a little curl maybe. Just roll them right up like that. Very cute. Going to do that with the other one as well. There we go. And we have our two yellow tails. Yellow tail, not a tuna, it's a wreath. It's not a tuna, it's a wreath. And we're just going to dovetail those as well. Sometimes I don't dovetail. The long tails, but in this case, I think it's very pretty with that lace trim. And there you go, guys. We are done and complete. Here it is for you. I love it. It's awesome. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Remember to like and subscribe our channel. We're just going to do more and more of these fun things. We will also be taking you along our farming journey this summer, where we will be backyard farming and farming cut flowers for sale here, right here in our flower shop. That's right. So we will have fresh grown Newfoundland flowers sold right here in Newfoundland. So follow along that journey. We're gonna have lots of fun things to see this summer. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye.